What's going on? Today we're doing investigating windows from Troy Hackney. Investigating windows is a room that focuses on your forensic and improving forensic skills. So you're given a machine, infected machine, a windows infected machine required to find the infection, uh, how it happened and the files that have infected the machine. So you are now putting yourself in the shoes of a forensic investigator to find out the root cause of the compromise. So let's scroll down, deploy the machine, and you will have the IP address. And these are the credentials. I'm going to work on the machine from my Kali Linux. So I'm going to switch here to my Kali Linux. And let me take the command, connect via our desktop, replace here the IP address of the machine. And one four one 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 six six. Username is given, which is administrator. And I'm going to append sudo. Yes, the password. Okay, so now we are logged in. Let's see what it is. C10MIM.exe. So see, whenever we connect, we see, we see this. Okay, let's cancel, refresh. All right, so let's first take a look at the system information. One prompt. So system info. Properties, font, make this bigger. Okay, so these are the system information. If we go up, we see it is Microsoft Windows Server 2016 data center. Uh, I want to, I don't know why this is the only, it's not uh, okay. So Let's go down, see other information about this device version, Windows directory, system directory. What matters, what matters most of the time is the Windows uh, server, the version, and the OS name. The version is here. If we go down, network cards, hyper requirements. Okay, now let's see the next thing to investigate is when was the last time, or what are the users on the system? So net user, you see we have administrator, Jenny, John, three users. Okay, now we wanna see when was the last time every one of these users logged into the machine. So we type net user and administrator. So the last time this user has logged in is last log on 3 4 2021, which is today, right? 3 4? Yes. Okay, let's see how about uh, Jenny. Jenny never logged in. How about John? Last log in was two days ago. Three, two, no, not two days ago, actually two years. Two years ago. All right. So now we see the kind of type of system. We see uh, the footprints, about uh, the footprints of the users. And now we have to know who are the admins and who are not the admins, right? We wanna see who is the main admin on the system. So we're gonna close the comment prompt. Uh, I need the search here. There is no search. Okay, so 
let's type LUS user manager. Okay, now go to users. So, indeed, we have let's go to groups, administrators, properties. So, all of these users that we have seen earlier are administrators. Ad Jenny, no, actually, only administrator and Jenny. John is not an administrator. Let's go to John, see what actually John does on the system. Member of he is a regular user. Okay. Fine. Now let's go to Event Viewer and investigate more about what happened on this machine. So, Event Viewer, we have three kind of events. Let's Go to Windows Logs, have the application logs, related to the applications, security for the last login, the shutdown, the log of setup, a hidden system for everything related to system events. So we can corroborate the evidence we have found earlier by going to uh, security. Okay, here we're going to filter for specific IDs. Fresh. Okay, let's filter. So anytime the event ID, gonna here type for six, for six twenty four. Four six twenty four is the event ID for all of the log in related logs. Log in, log out, this kind of stuff. But there is no display here, for whatever the reason, security, okay, fine. Let's see here. So we have in total 191 events. If we take an example from here, audit success, you see the account was successfully logged in. And the account, we can see more information about the account here. Account name. We're well, interested in seeing the username. So the computer, the computer name. This this um, means that there is an Active Directory here. All the success. So these are all of the IDs that are related to all of the events related to uh, someone logged in, someone logged out. This kind of stuff. Now we can filter for another event ID. So we can click here, filter. Uh, okay. And here we type 4672. So we're looking for timestamp. Okay, so you see the timestamp appeared here. So it's very important to know the timestamp of the login when it comes to forensic. All right, now let's see try hack me the questions we require to answer. So what the, the ver what is the version uh, and year of the Windows machine? So let's uh, go back. Minimize this. The command prompt. I'm going to close this one. So we typed. I don't know why this keeps popping up. Okay. System. All right.
So Windows Server 2016 Data Center. Windows Server 2016 Data Center. Oh? No. Okay. Which user logged in last? So it was administrator. It was us, right? Today. When did John log into the system last? The answer format needs to have the timestamp, as you can see here. So let's get back. Net user John. Last log in was this one. So copy that. Oh my god, that's copy. Okay, one more, one more time. Wrong. When did John log into the system last? I'm going to type this manually. 3 2 2019. 3 2 Put the zeros in place. Okay. What IP does the system connect to when it first starts? What IP does the system connect to when it first starts? So it's asking, right? Uh, we want to know what are the programs, files, the scripts, whatever that start when the system boots up. That's how we find the IP. So we look for registry editor, reg edit, and we look for software. Make sure you are on the machine, local machine, Microsoft. Looking for Windows, current version. Run. So there is a script or yeah, a script that is running executable that's running every time the system boots up. As you can see, this is the command uh, modify. This is the complete command. So whenever the system boots up, it connects to this IP address, right? And outputs the with the user and outputs the uh, you know the results to o2.txt in temp. You can examine this later. But this is the IP address 103423. So 10 What two accounts had administrative privileges other than the administrator? We saw that before it was Jenny John. Why it's not working? Oh, Jenny and guests. I just remembered this. Okay. Now, what's the name of the scheduled task that is malicious? So, after we have um, collected information about the users, the administrators, when they have last logged in, what are the commands that are uh, running? At the system startup, we required here we want when we want to know what are the scheduled tasks because one of the signs or one of the uh, 
properties of malwares is that they are scheduled to run every time the system starts up or uh, every time, every once in a while. So let me close this one and go to task manager. Actually, not task manager. We're going to have to go to task scheduler. So schedule tasks. We go to library, Microsoft. So here are the scheduled tasks. It's much like Chrome tab in Linux. So let's see here. We have Amazon, easy to launch, disabled. We have check logged in, runs every day at 4.59. Clean fire system, runs every day 4.55. Flash update, game over, update windows. So any one of these could be the malicious uh, process. Okay, so this one is disabled. I'm gonna pass this. Check logged in properties. We see here when I see the comment, the triggers. As you can see, it runs every time, every day, 459 actions. It starts Windows Explorer. So I'm gonna assume that this is fine. Next one, clean fire system. Properties, triggers every day at 455 actions. The actions are starting a program or a PowerShell script that listens on port 1348. So this is a PowerShell listener. So uh, most, most probably it listens for incoming connections from the command and control server 1348. Let's examine these. Go to C, temp. So This is the script, we can just right click and edit to view its content. So this is the partial script. Uh, let's see here, client, listen port, execute. It's partial netcat actually, right? Okay, so this is the listener, and we have other files. Let's oh, let's examine the other scheduled tasks. Do that later. Okay, flash update, properties, actions, PowerShell, Windows style, hidden, no dash C. All right, next one, game over. Ah, look at this one. So it starts a program in temp that invokes a Mimikatz command. Mimikatz command. Mimikatz command displays the passwords of the logged in users and, and displays, uh, sorry, uh, writes the output to auto.txt. So this is another malicious process. Runs every five minutes. So the trigger one time. One time at 4:47, 3 2019. I guess it 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 was run on this on the system at this date and then triggered to run every five minutes after this date. So this um, makes me realize that the compromise date is 3 2019, and after that every five minutes the tool would display the passwords or write the passwords of the current logged in users to the auto.txt. So we're actually close to um, cleaning this infected machine and determining the root cause. So basically here, as you can see, the game over displays the, the passwords and the clean file system here listens for incoming connections. So we have now two processes with their um, associated files and executables that were, that were the root cause of the infection on the system. So before uh, proceeding, let's now go to try hack me and see what are the questions we require to answer. What's the name of the scheduled task that is malicious? Clean by system. What file was the task trying to run daily? It is nc.ps1. It's a listener, that cut listener. What port did this file listen locally for? 
So we saw that the script listens on port 1348. 1348. When did Jenny last log in? So here we go back to users. Net user. Jenny. Jenny never. She never used an account. At what at what date did the compromise take place? So let's go back. Task scheduler we see here in the game over triggers it was triggered at 3 2 2019, two years before, two years ago. So 0302 2019. At what time did Windows first assign special privileges to a new log on? This is interesting. At what time? Did Windows first assign special privileges to a new log on? So here we, this one, we're going to need to look at the event viewer. So event viewer, and it, it is already here. 4672 displays the special privileges. Login. The first one, sort by date. Uh, yes. Two, three. I guess this is not from newest. Okay. I will look at the oldest one. So, like that. So, two, three, 2019, 8, 14, 30. We have a special privileges assigned to new log on. This was the first one. See, all the privileges have been assigned. Have been assigned. So let's answer with this date, 2-13-2019, and a timestamp. Or we can copy that. Copy. Hmm, wrong. Let's get back. At what time did Windows first assign? Maybe it's the other way around. Special privileges. Same. Well, eight fourteen thirty. So eight. 14, 30 a.m. And okay, we are already doing this. Okay, I'm gonna skip this one. The date is not working for me. Uh, for the answer, I'm gonna go for the next question. So, what tool was used to get Windows passwords? So we saw that the task scheduler it was Mimikatz. What was the attacker's external control and command server's IP? So we have two options to find this. First one. Uh, go to task scheduler and we see here uh, the clean file system now these are the files created by the uh, the footprints created by the attackers files we see here the nc okay we see the mim the mimicat one and let's go back to task scheduler properties Oh, the txt file and the other one only this so where is the o file not here okay schedule task backdoor what is this 
edit. Okay. System. This is the output of the system command. MIM out. This is the output of the Mimikatz, the passwords of the users. D. Uh, I don't think it's related to us. Okay. Now, if we take a memory dump of this uh, system here and analyze it with volatility, we'll be able to see the command and control um, IP address. But suppose we can't or we didn't, we can view that by viewing the host file. Normally, uh, malwares add an entry in the host file in the Windows system to be able to contact the command and control in case it was a domain. So we can just view the host file to find about us. Let's see, here's the list of quick access. What do we have? ETC host, it is here. Not bad, open. Let's examine the host file. So we have an entry for update Microsoft, virus total, local. So the only way to find out if these are curated by the malware or not, actually they are, because the virus total doesn't have this IP address as an address, right? So whenever it's the, the malware has just entered these details here of the attackers so that the uh, machine will not be able to update, not be able to contact Microsoft for update, will not be able to contact VirusTotal for examining viruses or to update its antivirus signatures. If we go to any browser here, for example, uh, from from edge come on I can't access the browser okay let's go to virus total see what's gonna happen so virus total And lastly, we see an IP address that whenever we connect to Google, okay, it will resolve to this IP address, which is um, kind of weird because Google doesn't have this IP address. So this may makes me think that the command and control IP address is this one. I'm going to try answering with this one. I enabled the clipboard, but it is not responding to me. Okay. Okay. What was the extension name of the shell uploaded via the server's website? So here, this was the origin of the uh, attack. It's asking, what is the name or what's the extension of the shell that has been uploaded by the attackers when they compromise the web server? So since this is a uh, Windows machine, we're gonna have to look for that in C in its pub dot dot root. Uh, so see these are the, the files. The extension is GSP. What was the last port attacker opened? Check for DNS poisoning. What site was targeted? Okay. Uh, let's get back. So 
coming back to the host file, we see that the DNS poisoning happened so that whenever we look for google.com, it would go to the attacker's IP address. So the DNS poisoning happened on google.com. So google.com. And that was correct. Okay, so now what was the last port the attacker opened? Hint, firewall, okay. So this is the shell which was in GIF extension, GSP. Okay, if we want to clean the server, we can just delete these files, okay? And let's go to the firewall now. Why are we going to firewall? Because um, it happens always when, when uh, an infection happens in the machine, there is a firewall rule created to allow the connection from the command control and to the machine. So we have to look in the firewall rules, specifically in the impound rules, because the attackers would send the commands to the machine in order to control it. They need an impound rule for that. So let's check these out. These are the impound rules allow outside connections for development. program any okay so we look here for the program what was the program that um, needed this permission from the firewall here it is saying any okay so anything labeled with any needs investigation um, so let's click on this one go to properties Allow outside connections for development. We're not going to look at the description. It's not indicative of the uh, a kind of rule because sometimes attackers would fool um, system administrators into thinking something that is it does not. So let's go to programs and services. All programs, remote computers, ports, port one three three seven. So one, the port one three three seven. Uh, happens to be the port that the script is listening to. If we go to properties here, conditions, no, 1348. Advanced public. Remote users, no computers. Okay, so this one we can put this one on the side. Let's look at the second one service firewall. The port is 48. The next one is 9955, but the next one is labeled with the system. So, as you can see, whenever you see a program or path specified in the rule, um, you just look at the path, but these are not suspicious ones. So it's either 1337 or 48. Yeah, most probably it's 1337. So 1337. Yes, so that's the answer. That was the answer. So in a nutshell, the, how, the how the attack happened. Basically, the attackers, uh, let's go back to, the attackers have uploaded a reversal on the web, on the web server, all right. The universal has opened a um, port to listen for the incoming connections, which was the port 1337. And then the attackers dropped the game over, executable to display the passwords of the login users, and they scheduled the tool to run every time, every uh, minute, I guess, triggers, every five minutes. And then they opened another connection with a clean fire system to listen on the incoming uh, connections on port 1348. So to clean the attack, we have to remove the game over executable. Okay, remove the script here, drop the uh, 
this rule from the firewall and clean the registry for clean the registry editor from the startup rule that starts the script every time and lastly lastly yeah last is secure system that's it but we're going to do that because uh, other people are working on this uh, lab so we're going to leave this as they are and yes that was it see you in the next video